might make it a video. <laughs> I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> um, you know, people just anyway, it's a holiday. day. I, I just I, I stopped indexing these videos because I just stopped watching them because he's just going to irritate the fuck out of you for no good reason. So anyway, he's playing these DOS American atheist videos. So he's playing some other douchebags videos, some boring nerdy douchebag. Um, excerpts from James Iman. Anyway, um, you know, I'm just so sick of this nihilist shit. These little games people are playing it with reality. Um, you know, it's sort of the rule of the fact that chaos did, were created out of a kind of sloppy system, okay, where it's a very crude forces that have basically caused the condensation of matter and just very narrow little particular concepts. You know, just the idea, the idea, okay, of a molecule that would replicate itself. It has consequences, you know, and it's a, it's a very simple idea, you know, replication, but it has huge consequences in terms of, quite obviously, in terms of how matter can become quite complexly configured because of that redundancy. You know, if, if it could happen in like the eddies in a stream, you know, if the eddies in a stream, this little complex swirl could duplicate itself, you know, this would have a consequence in terms of how complex the motion of water would be. And perhaps it could take three years for water to actually flow down the stream. It might never even go down the stream ever. It might get trapped forever, literally, um, in a stream. You know, certain molecules. Um, you know, as a consequence of this simple idea. Well, anyway, so there's this this idea that we're sitting here as these things that can now think, and we can think because of evolution, because it's a good tool to have to be able to think. And uh, thinking is basically this idea of, you know, let's investigate the world, let's label things, you know, let's figure out that red isn't blue, and big isn't small, and heavy isn't light, and, you know, all this kind of stuff, and do all these, you know, all this figuring out of how this thing works, you know. Two legs, good, <laughs> bad, four legs, good. Let's figure this stuff out um, and, and see where we are. And that's what we have a brain that can do this. But you have to understand when you have this brain that it can also do things because it's so simply, it's so crudely, the mechanism that gave it to us is so, 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 uh, it's such a thin line that there's no rule that you can't just be a fucktard and destroy any concept of usefulness of your brain. Because you'll just sit there and say, I will break the premise rules, like, okay, reality is reality. And because I can imagine that somebody is tricking me, <laughs> therefore, because I can imagine it, now I have to concede that that's equally probable or equally likely because it's an imagined scenario. So that's what these these idiots do, right? <laughs> Stuck in the empirical box, unable to assimilate arguments and abstractions. I don't even know what that means. Um, I don't. I don't know what possibly. I don't know what that title even means. Um, I don't know whether he's agreeing with this guy. Well, he must be agreeing with him. He's probably playing his video. Um, so, anyway, it's just this nihilist mush, you know, that um, we can't know reality is reality. Therefore, because we can't prove reality, we can't oblige other people with theories about reality, like God, uh, to demonstrate evidence for their fantasies. Because somehow it's a fantasy for me to believe that we actually landed on the moon, or that Voyager actually circled around Saturn. That's a fantasy comparable to making up some idiotic Jesus story 2,000 years ago by ignorant, dumb sand people. You're just, you know, is there any place to have a conversation in here, this box anywhere? Again, in the context of the previous videos where people just keep, these nihilists, these relativists, keep trying to destroy the idea that there is a real world that can be described. So this guy's going to use the word philosophy like it means something. Philosophy is just an extension of science that has to do with the things you can't see, the functions that you can't see the ethical function, <laughs> you know, the, the, the manifestations of the reality um, that don't have, 
direct linkage. Now, like our consciousness, for example. You can only really understand it philosophically. Scientifically, it's a little hard to understand its existence. Although there is a mechanic to it. And there's, <clears throat> like I said, it can be understood, but you have to understand, you have to understand words like uh, a material illusion, a real illusion, something manufactured, synthetic, but still real. And those concepts get a little bit, uh, you know, you have to do a little, you have to do some talking for a while about physics and reality to make it understood why that's not a paradox. Uh, a, a synthetic reality. Second, assuming that reality exists separate from consciousness in order to acquire about external reality is circular. Right, so assuming reality is all he's saying. So assuming that you're not a machine creating everyone else's consciousness, creating all the weather, creating the entire universe, assuming that you're not capable of generating all that in your head, <laughs> okay, or the assumption would be that your head is really just a a badly configured holodeck, right? It's like a flaw in the holodeck that when they created this fake reality I'm existing in, where apparently my consciousness is capable of creating the entire universe, even though it doesn't have nearly enough neurons to do that, not even close, <laughs> you know, to create the entire universe, um, uh, including all of your perceptions, uh, you know. Um, clearly, that's a mistake in the holodeck, you know, that they, that when they made this fake reality that we're existing in, they didn't give us a theory of mind that gave us, instead of a hundred billion neurons, a zillion trillion neurons. See, if they gave us a brain with a zillion trillion neurons, well, then maybe you could make some kind of realistic assumption that my brain is manufacturing the universe. But there's no way to make a realistic assumption. So then you have to say, well, okay, so if this solipsistic <laughs> fake machine is creating this synthetic perception of reality that is me and you and the entire universe in some big, giant, trillion, 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 trillion sized, gigantic, brainy thing somewhere, it's not smart enough to make this holodeck correctly? It made a stupid error in the holodeck? Well, does that make sense? No. See, and that's where philosophy comes in, because philosophy would say that's a category problem, in the sense that you can't put stupid, stupid thing, stupid error, in the category smart. And something that could create an entire universe as a fake projection would have to be smart. So there are two things can't they can't have both of those properties. Can't make stupid mistakes and be smart enough to create an incredible synthetic university thing. So then we have indication that there might be something wrong with this idiotic notion <laughs> that I have to worry about assuming reality. And that it, based on the evidence that all the other synthetics seem just as good as me, which also seems kind of a flaw, wouldn't, wouldn't I tend to be better than them? I mean, just as, as a consequence of the fact that I am originating, they're, they're, they're the projection, they're the synthetic, and how come they seem just as real as me, or just as competent as me, or even more competent than me? That wouldn't, it doesn't seem like the synthetic should be better than the thing supposedly creating them. Anyway. Obviously, if we want to inquire about an external reality, there has to be an external reality. But to say that we have to assume this external reality is to assume that we can't have good reasons for believing that reality exists. So Assumes that we can't have good reason to believe that reality exists. I don't even know what that means. So what, what is your accusation? Either we're assuming it or we're not assuming it. Either we have good reasons or we don't have good reasons. <laughs> I mean, this guy's not even making sense. All right, let's do it again. I mean, it's only a two-minute video. I, I should be able to do this in a half an hour, or an hour. ...be an external reality. But to say that we have to assume this external reality is to assume that we can't have good reasons for believing that reality exists. Well, I mean, if you have good reasons, then you don't have an empirical box problem. I mean, I'm just saying the empirical thing is basically just saying, look, you have evidence that's of a high enough quality. So if we have good reason... That's the, essentially the same thing as empirical. Oh, 
Now, this is exactly the sort of circularity we should expect from someone who thinks the only things which should be believed are those which are empirically verifiable. And this is exactly why such people seem unreasonable, all the while claiming to be driven by reason. If the only uh, thing that should be believed uh, are those... Empirical. So again, I guess the, the problem here is is that you know we're back to a word that does, is not very well defined. So empirical, apparently from his perspective, is material proof. And so again, that would be, there's lots of circumstantial evidence. It doesn't necessarily have to be direct evidence. And certainly some of the circumstantial evidence could be uh, abstract, uh, formulaic, uh, probability, for example which can be empirically verified. And we can't empirically verify the existence of reality separate from consciousness, which we can't. All right, so you're saying, he's saying, we can't verify reality separate from consciousness. And you could, you could argue you can't verify reality separate from anything because it's beyond verification. It's like, it's like seeing a photon. You can't see photons. You can't bounce photons off of photons and see them. Okay, so literally, you can't see a photon. It's just a fact. All right, and uh, just as you know, see in terms of observe, you cannot observe a photon. All right, and the same is holds true for reality. Reality can't be demonstrated beyond its own material existence. It can't produce ec an extra evidence beyond the fact of its existence. That's just a rule for everything everything, everywhere, uh, all the time. So it's just more reason why this is one of those things where you say, ah, I understand. <laughs> this is a loophole because this is created by a system that is made of crude forces. So this is why there is no capacity to verify. This is why there is no capacity to see a photon. It's because the physical reality has a limitation and isn't going to allow you to bounce photons off of photons. Why, then, should we assume it? How is this assumption reasonable, particularly in light of the framework offered, that of empiricism? Well, <clears throat> so again, he's saying it's, it's, people are saying, I don't even know what he's saying again. Empiricism, we, people are saying, they're assuming based on empirical evidence. That's not what they're saying. They're saying it doesn't really matter. They're saying, without the assumption, there's no rational conversation because you've essentially blown up any rules. The rules of, our, of any kind of discussion about reality no longer exist if you blow up the universe. So if you turn the universe into some imaginary creation, then obviously all ethics, all notions of everything disappear. There's no conversation anymore. There's nothing to talk about. And you certainly won't be able to tell us what the real reality behind reality is so without any knowledge of what that real reality is, you can't have a conversation. So you might as well just blow your brains out because you can't think anymore. There's nothing to think about because you, can't, you won't have access to the dimension of reality that you're claiming is reality that's hidden behind this fake synthetic reality. And you can't see it. There's no way to see the fake reality through the real reality. There's no way to see the real reality through the synthetic one. So why don't you just suggest everybody blow their intelligence out of their brain? Just blow your brains out. Become an imbecile or a retard. Drink lead paint. Why don't you say that, fuckhead? If you're going to play this game and say that this is a, this is a, 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 you know, a pointless endeavor to establish good reason to believe... Assuming something of this magnitude is inexcusable. All the more no, no, it's inexcusable not to assume it, to tell you the truth. Because it's the only thing you got. And it's like I say, as soon as you deny the credibility of the physical, material universe we are mutually perceiving, as soon as you say it is synthetic, you say there is nothing to talk about. Because we now have zero references. We have nothing to talk about. We can't talk about suffering, we can't talk about justice, we can't talk about fairness, we can't talk about a single goddamn fucking thing ever again, because none of it has a reference anymore. You don't understand that fuck? Stupid shit. So, because it doesn't need 
to be assumed. You can argue for it. But in order <clears throat> well, you can't really argue for it in any kind of beyond, <laughs> well, yeah, beyond logically. And maybe that's what you're saying, that just argue for it logically. But again, that doesn't, that doesn't change the fact that when people are making claims about a material reality, when they're making claims about what is reality, that they should have empirical, they should have good evidence. When you're making some kind of extraordinary claim, you should have extraordinary evidence. So that rule seems to me doesn't get negated by the fact that we have to assume reality is reality. Assuming reality is reality is a little different than claiming there's a Jehovah. Those two claims are fucking different. And they require a different standard of evidence. In order to be able to argue for it, you can't use science. You have to use philosophy. Yeah, well, whatever. I, I mean, this, this line you people want to draw between science and philosophy is idiotic. There is no philosophy outside of science. You must, you must, in my opinion, uh, deal with what is the evidence of science, not the conclusions of science, the evidence of science, the evidence of experiments. You have to deal with that um, as a foundation for the extrapolation of consequence and meaning that you do with philosophy. So philosophy merely takes the physical fact and then describes whether it's a good game or a bad game, whether it is sufficiently efficient, whether uh, it's a straight line between a, 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 a goal and a desire. Before I get into some of these arguments, I want to reiterate that one of the primary issues I take with many of my fellow atheists... Eh, whatever fellow atheists, <laughs> you know, it's terminology... Um, you mean you hedonistic, nihilists, um, assholes? Yeah, I mean, pantheists? They're not atheists. Make it up atheists? Is their position that they will only entertain evidence for the existence of God if it is empirical evidence? <clears throat> well, there's no other kind that could possibly mean anything when you're making a claim of creation. That's right. There's just none. You can't claim miracles and then say, I'm not going to prove them with some kind of evidence of a miracle, some sort of scientific evidence. Without scientific evidence, the claim is meaningless. It can't be separated from the claim, I had dinner with Bugs Bunny last night. Uh, does anyone have an obligation to take that seriously? I claim I had dinner with Bugs Bunny last night. Does anyone have an obligation to take that seriously? No. If empiricism is the measure of acceptable evidence, then empiricism can't get off the ground because empiricism cannot justify itself by its own framework. You know, I think it can <laughs> in the sense that you can find flaws in the rejection of it. You can find paradoxes that you'll crash into, as I just described, the paradox of my brain being insufficient. Solipsism can't work as a theory because my brain isn't sufficient to generate the complexity of reality. Um, I couldn't even generate the weather with this brain. If you're willing to accept assumptions about something like empiricism, then it's special pleading to reject any other assumptions. <clears throat> well, again, you're saying it's an assumption, not a rational deduction. So that would be one argument. But certainly, the fact that there's no reason to believe not the assumption of religion because if you're going to call it an assumption yeah then it's already invalidated it's an assumption based on no evidence so assumptions that have no compelling reason to be accepted versus an, an assumption that has a compelling reason to be accepted the compelling reason to accept the material reality as existing is first the fact that there are paradoxes created by annihilating reality. And second, we don't have a brain that has any use anymore. Our brain is negated as a useful device anymore if you're going to assume the universe is fake. That it's a projection for some cause that exists on the other side okay, of the reality. So you're saying, there's a, there's a, I'm assuming this to be reality. And 
the point is, if I don't assume this to be reality, I can't see back there. I can't know what reality is from here, from synthetic world. So I'm out of the game. I have no, my brain is now rendered moot. It can't do anything constructive or productive because it can't know anything about the truth. So that's a pretty compelling reason to just say, fuck, this seems like enough of a piece of shit to deal with, so let's just deal with it. Let's deal with this thing, this thing that seems pretty fucking real, that does seem to have all the constituents of reality. It has little bits, it's doing all kinds of shit, it seems to behave quite consistently over time. It doesn't seem to have too many of these hologram errors in it. <laughs> yeah, so why wouldn't I accept it as reality? I'd have to be an asshole not to. Asshole. You've given away your rights to a framework that would exclude any assumptions. Given away the right to a framework that would exclude any assumptions. No, I don't. Like I said, it's not an assumption without a context. So that's all this asshole is saying. He's just basically saying, my assumptions, religion, are somehow have credibility. Your assumption, the material universe exists, doesn't have credibility. Those two assumptions, the assumption that reality, as perceived by my consciousness, is a real thing, <clears throat> is a far more credible assumption than that guy says he had dinner with Bugs Bunny last night. I have no obligation to assume he has any credibility. None. Zero credibility. Where the common statement from every known eyewitness, except for people living in cardboard boxes and truthers and maybe Nazis or something, all the rest have testified to, hey, this all feels pretty fucking real, fucker. Yeah, so I, I'd say there's a huge difference between these, if you're going to call them assumptions or something you have to accept on face value, um, the face value is hugely different. There's a lot more face in this reality than the idiotic statement, I had dinner with Bugs Bunny last night. Likewise, if you're willing to accept arguments for things that cannot be empirically proved, like the existence of reality separate from consciousness. Reality separate from consciousness, right. Uh, so again, he's, again, he just keeps, he keeps just trying to drag these two things into being the same subject, that a claim of the existence of a supernatural God is the same thing as the claim that material reality that we perceive is not a synthetic reality created by some other mechanism. Those two assumptions he's saying are equal in terms of the gravity of the question, the character of the question, the materiality of the question, and the evidence of the question. I clearly don't have any motive to mistestify on the subject where the religious kook does clearly have a motive to pervert experience. He certainly doesn't have any. His assumption is based on no experience, mostly, unless he's crazy and says he talked to God. Um, and mine is based on a flood, a ton, of personal experience with this material world. But you're not willing to entertain arguments for things that for other things that cannot be empirically proved, the existence of God, for example. Again, so he's just, he's just saying that all assumptions are equal, all subjects are the same, and they're not. The subject of whether we live in a matrix is, <laughs> is many scales of substance different than the question of it, are there any realistically viable claims of supernatural God phenomenon. You are, once again, guilty of special pleading. So it behooves my fellow atheists. I just hate that shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm not your fellow anything, nerdy put. To understand this problem and understand the necessity of philosophy. Yeah, whatever. So again, yeah, philosophy used for what, you know, again, anything can be <laughs> used quite obviously, you know. People keep talking about how they're going to use logic and how they're going to use this and use that. <clears throat> You're just going to use, again, philosophy. When philosophy is just discovery of the truth, and that's all it should be, and that's all that science should be. 
is an effort to discover the truth of how it fucking works. What is the truth of the thing, the reality that we're discussing, that we're living in, that we're talking about? And any philosophical question that doesn't have to do with that question of what is the real efficiency or the real the answer, yeah, isn't doing anything honest. If you're trying to use it to do something besides understand reality, you're abusing it. I'm concerned. So anyway, this stuff does, I mean, it's just so much of this out there. You know, I mean, I just, you know, I'm going to be having some, I think, future conversations with some people with, uh, on the, you know, the subject of this, this, this quantum option, you know, to just uh, pretend there's some mechanism in the universe that will create or facilitate um, some meaning to words like free will or some idea, you know, that consciousness is something other than something synthesized in brains. It's just synthesized in brains. It has, to, it only, it has function. Our, you know, I, I've said this in videos, but we'll do it again probably many times, because this is the importance of taking evolution seriously. We feel because it creates motivation. We think because it creates strategy. And that's why we have a consciousness. Consciousness has, is, is a, as a mechanism, has the, the faculty of creating this thing called enhanced behavior. It enhances our behavior by creating a direct motivation to do what's, you know, in terms of creating goal orientation, um, you know, creating uh, incentive, um, passion, energy, energy. That's a good word. Energy to do something, motivation, and um, and then it does this strategizing to balance um, the imperatives. So again, as I've gave the example, the great advantage of the mammal intelligence was that it could figure out that it might be hungry, but it might be better to wait to go eat because there was a threat out there that might kill them. So they would figure out strategies that worked better than just acting on impulse so they could have a need and they could suppress it with knowledge and that was the key and that's why we have a consciousness it's clearly fundamentally tieable to the product it creates which is enhanced behavior it's perfectly consistent there's nothing about our consciousness that is in any way unnecessary to that function, to that ability. Yes, we consciousness could be our 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 intelligence, our ability to have enhanced behavior could be manifested in different ways. There could be perhaps different ways of 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 balancing motivations and strategies. But the fact is, motivations and strategies are essentially and completely necessary to something getting done, to complex behavior ever happening. It really can't happen any other way unless you just create a very elaborate program that just algorithmically you know, says, this is what you do when this, 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 and this are true. I mean, it didn't have to create the feeling, you know, the, the actual value of a feeling. It needed to create value. That was the motivating part. And it, in trying to synthesize the idea of value, it made real value, as I've pointed out. Didn't, it would be better if it didn't, <laughs> because then there'd be no such thing as suffering. But it might not even be possible to create something called real motivation without creating real motivation, which means something that creates a necessity, an urgency, uh, a necessary compulsion. In theory, you can come up with this idea maybe of creating a synthetic, a you know, a computer that has a dual brain, you know, dual processors, let's say. One processor, you know, pulls what it has backdoor strings to the other processors 
um, agenda and that they both kind of pull on each other in terms of forcing each other to comply with their agenda. And so you can come up with a matrix for doing that, but I'm just saying it's the fact that biology came upon this is understandable in the sense that biology isn't that didn't have blueprints. It made the thing from scratch out of virtually nothing. Yeah, Puking up something. Yeah, and they're charming, no doubt. <laughs> anyway, yeah, nature's just swell. Anyway, so probably enough of a video. <sighs> Till next time, and such.